She was funny, healthy, active, beautiful, perfect. She played softball. She was a swimmer. You know, this was a child who ran and played. She had gotten a common bacteria. I met her about six and a half hours after admission. In that time, she was conscious, she was breathing, but very quickly, um, very scared. Her blood pressure was dropping. Her lungs were filling up with fluid. She had pneumonia. And she was um, very, very sick. She was on full cardiac and, and lung support with this intervention. There was no way to treat her highly drug-resistant infection. We're already seeing infections that can't be treated with any available antibiotic. And this is not for the future. We're there now. Life before this all started, I just was taking care of my daughter, just living life, you know, rollerblading at the beach and just doing, you know, regular Southern California stuff. Just went over to a friend's house for a barbecue and uh, about halfway through, I started feeling some, some pains in my lower abdomen that I'd kind of never felt before. That Sunday night, uh, it escalated into just complete abdomen burning, cramping, and it was pretty, pretty solid, consistent pain. They did a, a really, really quick CAT scan. He says, well, it's what we call a gram-negative ESBL E. coli, and you've perforated your colon. And I had no idea what that meant. I didn't know what the ramifications were. He says, well, it's a horribly antibiotic resistant, and we call them superbugs. I'm surprised you're still conscious. And they didn't think I had much more than an hour or two. My daughter was, uh, was in there with me. And that's when it uh, kind of hit me that uh, for the first time in my life, I thought I was gonna die. People expect miracles from the antibiotics, and there aren't that many miracles left. So who's to blame? Well, I think we all are. Um, we, the scientific community, for complacency. Well, antibiotics have uh, been so remarkable in what they've been able to achieve that we've tended to overuse them, overuse them, overuse them. We, the pharmaceutical industry, for looking too much at the bottom dollar. Antibiotic development is dying. Companies are abandoning and have abandoned efforts to develop new antibiotics. They're not as profitable as other drugs, and there are unbelievable regulatory barriers. The politicians who need to help us mandate and enforce healthcare initiatives. We overuse antibiotics in the environment that's not the human environment. Up to 80% of the antibiotics used in the United States are given to livestock so that the animals are bigger when farmers sell them. It's pathetic. Farmers putting antibiotics in animal feed, the animal eats the feed, we break down our immune system internally. And that's, that seems to be how I acquired this. I don't think people understand how devastating a bacterial infection can be, even to someone who's healthy and young. I have a lot of hope because she's 12, because she's made good progress so far. I don't think very many people expected she would survive that long transplant. Addie is a recipient of a double lung transplant. That means she is at high risk for very resistant infections, including fungus, yeast. It's unclear whether her respiratory and her exercise abilities will return. What we're going is a return to the pre-antibiotic era. We're setting medicine back seven decades to the time when physicians were explicitly taught in school that they could not change the course of their patient's illness. You've got part of your colon come out your left side and we sewed up the rest of it to your insides to let it heal. He goes, chances are we can put you back together. Every day we live in fear of another infection. And I worry that when she does get another infection, is it gonna be with a bacteria that's resistant to everything? Are we one day just gonna lose her because we don't have a way to treat a bacterial infection anymore. It's something that could escape. Uh, and if it does, they're, they're afraid that they have no antibiotics to fight it this time. 
We need to be better stewards of the antibiotics that we have. Make the, the regulatory process easier. We have to acquire the will to permit, support, and in fact, mandate drug discovery. If we had every physician contact their representatives and say, our biggest problem is antibiotic resistance, that would have an impact. I think about what happened really every day. There's really no way around it. I've got scars. I'm torn up in my stomach, and it's just, I can't tell you how, how privileged I, I feel to be able to, to do this and, and be the voice of you know, people that can't, can't speak anymore. Now that we understand how bacteria can change and become resistant, we have to act accordingly. Something as simple as a little cut on your arm or a bug bite on your leg could mean the end of your life.